Hello and welcome to This Week in Laker Football, your exclusive weekly look into the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keeft alongside head coach Zach Hilbers and big smile on both of our faces because Lakers last week, huge showing out in Birmingham and a tough matchup between Division I and Division II, OAA Red, OAA Blue, and you went in there with hopes of a, of a victory and came out with quite a statement, 34-3. to Your initial thoughts on that win against the Maples? Yeah, it was, a, it was a tough game. I know the final score might have seemed a little bit more lopsided, but you know their, their goal is always to control the clock and, and kind of try to wear you down. And I was really glad that our defense stood up and you know didn't break at a, a lot of flexion points in the game. And they got key stops when they needed to. And our offense really played well in a, in a style of game where they were trying to keep the ball away from us. That was really from the, from the jump, what we saw jump off the screen from the Lakers was that battle of physicality. It's something you talked about last week. It's a feature of Jim DeWald's team, especially with how much they run the football. So how much of an emphasis did you put early on on going out there and just playing with a head of steam from, the, from start to finish? Uh, pretty much the entire emphasis, especially after uh, the way the previous week had gone against Oxford where they really out physicaled us. And we knew that you know um, if that happened again, we were going to be on the wrong side of it. So I was pretty happy with the way uh, we responded in practice last week and just got to do it again now. Yeah, what stood out defensively was how you went up against a really savvy offensive line. It was mentioned on the Preps broadcast, a really good point. Size-wise, really no matchup there between their line and your line, but what they've been able to do all season long is use their athleticism to their advantage. So how did you kind of preach that to your linemen, both offensively and defensively, to turn that into more of your advantage? Well, we knew they play with really good pad level and they play with really good motor, and that's just kind of been a staple of their program. So that was our emphasis all week in practice. So we tried to give them different looks that uh, could at least slow that down a little bit. And it was mostly successful. We got caught a few times, you know, um, I guess zigging when we meant to zag or whatever the expression might be. But uh, over the course of the game, it really proved to be beneficial. We're continuing to see this offense in particular kind of come into its own, find that balance that wasn't really there earlier on in the season because, frankly, the running game was what was working best, and you go with what works best. So yeah. how proud have you been, especially of this receiving core and really the entire offense as a whole, being able to get eight guys plus touches in that game last week and make big plays? Uh, it was great. Um, a lot of them deserved larger roles early on. We weren't able to get it to them because of the flow of the game or, you know, whatever reason. So to, to see them, you know, get rewarded for months of hard work is pretty cool. Um, and also, I think that's when we're at our best, when we're versatile and we can beat you any number of ways. Lakers winning 34-3 to on the road last week against Birmingham Seaholm. One more week left, also on the road Friday, 7 o'clock kickoff against Roseville to finish out the regular season. And the last week, uh, the week before that, kind of a tale of two different teams. But we've seen that throughout the season where you come off a win and sometimes you take a step back. You come off a loss, it seems like you take a huge step forward. So yeah. how do you try to balance that out and take more of what happens after a loss after this big win. Yeah, it was actually a talking point uh, yesterday in our first day of practice of the week. It's like we still haven't really put together back-to-back -to -back great games, and we're running out of chances to do that. So it's up to us now to, you know, it's week nine. We got to do it now, and then obviously if you want to do um, what you need to do to get where you want to be, you got to do it every week from here on out. So it has to start now, and uh, it's really going to start with this week in practice. Hopefully it's like last week. And defensively last week, going back to that, uh, holding a team like Seaholm to just three points, that says a lot about what you guys were able to do performing at all three levels on the mm -hmm. defensive side. What impressed you the most about that performance, other than, of course, limiting them to just a single field goal? Really getting out the field on fourth down. It's something we had struggled with for really in all of our losses was third and fourth down getting off the field and uh, I think they had five fourth downs we stopped them on all of them some of them are shorter um, which is pretty good against a team like that because that's what they want to do they want to possess the ball and keep your offense off the field and to get get them off the field and give us the ball back gave us chances to really get ahead and make them I guess a little bit more uncomfortable with their style. You saw a lot of big plays being made by all, all the usual people you'd expect on the defensive side of the ball, and even so on the offensive side, Elijah Durham with a pair of touchdowns, Josh Tate getting in the end zone, Bo Jackson throwing for three passing touchdowns in that ball game. But we're still also seeing some of the guys down the depth chart that have been in this program for a number of years, maybe been waiting in the wings on the varsity side, mm -hmm. step up and have a big game, including Malcolm Gibson. How proud of 
are you of them for taking that big step forward and really at the perfect time? Yeah, I was really happy for him. It's like he's always had the ability, and uh, there's whether it was like the situation of the game or the flow or, you know, um, he had a lot to figure out early on, and he's done that. So when you see a kid kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, grow and grow into the role um, and really – start to reach his potential. I mean, he had a really good half where he ran for over 100 yards, and we know he can actually do more. So I'm happy for him, but I also want to see him, you know, keep going and uh, really, I guess, show everybody what he can do. Great way to do that. Let's come out in, in this game against Roseville coming up on Friday, have a repeat performance, what we saw in Birmingham last week. Coach, your lasting thoughts from that win against Bir Birmingham Seaholm and where you want to see this team develop as they go into the final week of the regular season? I would say uh, exactly what you asked a minute ago. It's like us putting back-to-back -back weeks together and stringing more than two together, stringing you know, three, four, or five of these weeks of practice and games together and to see where it can take us because you know, once you get a lottery ticket into the playoffs in Division I, um, we've played playoff caliber teams all year so we know the challenges that it's going to take and we think we're battle tested we just you know got to be playing our best we want to be playing winning football at this time of the season the lakers come out of this week with a win They'll finish the regular season in with more with more numbers in the win column five and four as they head into playoff time could be a huge performance for them more on that roseville matchup coming up later but after the break we'll talk to one of those impact players joining in on in the ranks this week. Malcolm Gibson joins us next. It's This Week in Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Live, local, social. Dive into your community with the Splash Live. Coverage of events and exciting developments in the greater West Bloomfield area. Join Tyler Keefe, Kevin McIntosh, and the rest of our staff live out on the street or in our studio. Weekdays live on Comcast Channel 15 or on AT&T at Channel 99. Watch us online too on Facebook at Civic Center TV 15, on YouTube at Civic Center TV, or on our website, civiccentertv.com. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football, your exclusive weekly look into the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keefe, joined this week by Malcolm Gibson, running back, linebacker, and defensive utility player also for the Lakers in 2024. And coming off your biggest game of the season on the road last week in a tough environment against Seaholm, take us through your reaction after 100 yards last game, more than tripled your total yards from, from the season on the offensive side. Take us through that performance. Um, I just want to first say thank you to my online without them or without my blockers it wouldn't have been able I wouldn't have been possible for me to get those hundred yards and I just want to thank my coaches for giving me the opportunity to be able to show what my true talents are and like the real true person who Malcolm is and I just want to thank you for that opportunity and you know you know, my mindset through that game, I was just, you know, I was just focused on really running the ball. You know, when I run the ball, I just feel like I just feel like myself, you know, just like a kid again, just playing football on the field with a bunch of other regular people. You know, I'm just a human being like everybody else. So they bleed the same. I cry the same tears. We all cry the same. So it, it wasn't nothing really different for me. Just, you know, just playing football and just being myself. So for most of this season, what we've seen from you is kind of being, as I said earlier on, a defensive utility player, a little bit at the linebacker, a little bit at the third level with the safety crew and, and the nickelbacks and all of them. But you've kind of developed into this player that's been reliable as a support guy in, in all three phases. What was it like for you to kind of switch that up last week and be more of that featured guy? Um, I just really, you know, you know, throughout playing football, I just really wanted to, I want to make it far in this. So I just feel like being able to run that day, it was really my chance to show people what I could really do and who I really am. Malcolm Gibson with us on this week in Laker football. Running back, linebacker extraordinaire for the Lakers. After a big performance last week in Birmingham, looking for something similar this week as the Lakers wrap up their regular season on the road in Roseville. And development's been the key word for your team all season long. Relatively young across the board, but those senior leaders and Josh in the backfield, Bo at the quarterback, Jamal at the quarterback, that offensive line, how have they played a role in you continuing to be able to take a big step each and every week and be a key contributor to this team late in the season. Definitely Josh Tate and Bo and the Lion, you know, they're great role models for me. Josh Tate running the ball. It allows me to, you know, like get an image of what I need to do to be a varsity player and, you know, to be an absolute unit to run the ball for the team, for them to rely on me. 
And, you know, you're still a young player. It's really your first time getting out those big varsity minutes in 2024. It's increased throughout the season. There's always a couple of those players that seem to sneak into the fold as the season goes on and become impact players. And Lakers felt that impact in the past few weeks. The game against Oxford, you're taken out of the game early on after things got a little bit chippy in, the, in that ball game. What did you learn from that experience? And then take that into another high-pressure environment last week on the road in Birmingham. Um, we definitely learned from that experience that we definitely Definitely got to come with a better mentality and no matter what happened in the next game or what happened before or what's going to happen after, we definitely just got to keep our head focused on what's in front of us and move on after we complete that trial and, you know, tribulation. Do you think the team has turned a corner after last week and what we saw in the past few weeks when the team was shining against Lake Orion, even for a little while against Oxford and Clarkston in those losses? Do you think that they're starting to hit that point where you can really be scary come playoff time? Most, most definitely. I think now now more than ever my team, I think we're ready men mentally and physically we're ready. And um, I think my guys, I think we're ready to do what we got, what we got to do. What's, what do you think has been the difference maker in turning that corner? Um, I think definitely our coaches and the losses that we took, our coaches, you know, keeping us like in the game, telling us to keep our head, keep our head straight, block out all the noise, don't worry about what other people are saying about our losses and about what Ble West Bloomfield used to be. And um, I definitely think that was a big uh, change for us. 100 yards on the ground last week in Birmingham. Came a featured back in that backfield. Now Lakers got kind of a two-headed monster back there in Josh Tate and Malcolm Gibson. Going to have a continued high impact on the team this week against Roseville. Malcolm, as you close out this season, what are you personally looking forward to to up your game this week and hopefully contribute big to another Laker victory? Um, I'm definitely looking to just, you know, keep playing and just keep playing and being myself, you know, not to lose myself within, you know, whatever trials come with playing this great sport. Playoff selection shows on Sunday after Friday's game, after a win last week. Looks like you guys are going to be going dancing. You're looking forward yes, to that sir. selection Sunday. Any yes, special sir. plans with, with the fellas? Um, not yet, but I'm definitely going to find something to do. Big smile on his face. That means it's playoff time. The Lakers are focused and ready for a big game to close out the regular season. Back on the road this Friday, going up against the Panthers of Roseville, a battle between the 4-4 four and four Lakers, the 6-2 and two Panthers. We'll have our full coverage for you on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Stay tuned on our website, civiccentertv.com for slash Lakers sports. For more updates, Malcolm, thank you so much. No, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll take a break on this week in Laker football. More coming up, including a preview of next week's game with Coach Hilders. Stay with us. It's this week in Laker football. We've got news. Civic Center TV just reached 1 million views on YouTube. Over the years, we filed over 10,000 stories. We've covered local parades and events, life-saving efforts by first responders, remarkable accomplishments of local individuals, state championship athletic teams, and our area's history, government, and the people who volunteer to make our community better. Civic Center TV on cable, online, and on social media, now with over 1 million views on YouTube. Civic Center TV, thanks for watching. You're one in a million. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football, your exclusive weekly look into the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team on Civic Center TV. At 89.3 Lakes FM, I'm Tyler Keith alongside head coach Zach Hilbers. The Lakers coming off a win last week in Birmingham. Now they got to close out the regular season back out on the road against the Panthers of Roseville. Another team that's had a winning season, been really impressive in, in recent weeks. Coming off a big win last week against Romeo. What should we be focusing on as we look forward to Friday at 7 o'clock on the road? Well, they're really athletic. They can kind of match our athleticism on the edge and, you know, at linebacker on the lines and stuff. Uh, they've kind of been a program that's gradually getting, I guess, improving and getting better and better uh, each year, making deeper and deeper runs into the playoffs. So uh, it's definitely a challenge. Like we, uh, I told the kids they, they probably see this as a, a stepping stone game for them as a program if they go out there and, and try to play with a Division One team that's at least had recent success. So it's our job not to get caught up in that, like, it's our job to go play good football and, uh, you know, try, try our best to come out of there with a win. They've been scoring a lot of points. That offense is a high-powered offense, averaging almost 43 points per game, and they're giving up less than 20. Uh, no, three of, of 
their of their wins this season. They haven't allowed more than than a single score, more than three touchdowns in any of these games all together. So you know, how does that speak to your team being able to go out last week and execute, repeating yeah. that performance this week on the road? Well, see, Home had kind of been like that too. They've been a really good defense and we were able to kind of do things our way and take control of that game. And uh, you know, I guess you could say the same about Lake Orion or Clarkson or anybody else in our league. So. We've, we've had success in stretches, and uh, it's just about, I guess, trusting in our stuff and believing in the process and just knowing that we're battle-tested, and they might be really good, but we've played really good teams, so it's nothing that's going to shock us and surprise us. And facing that adversity and being able to, in, in pockets, overcome it and in other areas sort of have to go back and repeat those performances to learn those lessons, how can that actually maybe be beneficial as you go into a tough game to close out the regular season and that stepping stone into playoff time? Well, I guess, I mean, it's beneficial because when you get to the end of the year, there's nothing that's going to surprise you. You know, we, we've played teams that are athletic and powerful and really well coached and just such a variety. Um, and there's, like I said, there's nothing that's going to throw you off and then walk out, kick off the ball and be like, oh my gosh, we've never seen that before. Um, but at the same time, the, you know, they're, they're good. They have some really good players that have had really good careers and really good seasons. So, um, you know, they're definitely playing confident and the game means a lot to them. And they just, you know, knocked off a really good competitive division one team last week in Romeo, like you said. So, you know, they, they know that they can, they can do it. It's our job to, you know, stop that from happening. You come in this week, obviously you want to win that game. You want to finish your regular season strong, finish with a winning record, get that elusive two consecutive wins that you haven't been able to find this season. But the reality is you're in the playoffs. This game has a major impact on how that playoff outlook looks. How do you factor that into the motivation behind this football game while maintaining the focus on the 22 players you're going to be going up against offensively and defensively on Friday? I mean, yeah, you're right. We're, we're probably in the playoffs. It's not math mathematically guaranteed, I guess, but it would take, you know, some pretty crazy stuff happening. But, you know, that, that's part of the goal, but it's not the only goal. You know, we're planning to have a winning season right now, uh, maybe get a playoff home game, uh, depending on how the map falls. And then also, you know, for your own, I guess, pride and reputation and our expectations of ourselves, which uh, should be unchanged week to week. What's got to happen this week? What do you have to see from this team to be able to walk out of that game win or lose, ideally win, and, and say to them, you guys are ready for playoff time. We're ready for next week already, and this week is about making sure that we're ready for week two, week three, and beyond. Well, you know, we think we got some pretty good players, and they can do a lot. It's about execution for us, and we were able to do it a week ago, and we kind of saw the results. So I guess um, doing that back-to-back -back weeks like we had talked about and really just being clean and not making mistakes and doing all the things it takes to win the games in the playoffs because, you know, highlights might look cool, but it's really mistakes that more often than not lose you the game more than highlights win you the game. So, uh, yeah, just, just like we did a week ago, execute, execute excuse me, like, you know, um, what we're supposed to do and what we practiced. Lakers taking on Roseville, 7 o'clock kickoff on Friday night. It is in Roseville. Stay tuned for more information on our coverage on our website on civiccentertv.com slash Lakers Sports Coach. Before we let you go, any final thoughts as you head in to the final week of the regular season? You know, the fall is always such a blur to me. Uh, it never, you never really feel like you're in week nine. And uh, I guess just the, uh, the urgency of the playoffs looming, meaning, you know, like obviously every week the field's cut in half and half the teams are sent home for the year. Um, it's exciting, you know, and if that doesn't get you excited and ready to gear up and play, you know, another competitive football game, you're probably doing the wrong thing. So, uh, yeah, we're pumped up, we're amped up, and, you know, we're just ready to get it done. It all comes to a close on Friday night, the final week of the regular season. Decide your fate. Then it comes to the time of the year where every game could potentially seal that fate. Coach, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate you tuning in to This Week in Laker Football. Again, all of our coverage is online on civiccentertv.com slash Lakersports. Coverage of Friday night's game, 7 o'clock kickoff, Roseville on the road for the Lakers as they wrap up the 2024 regular season. For the entire athletic department here at West Bloomfield High School and our team over at Civic Center TV, alongside head coach Zach Hilbers, I'm Tyler Keeft. Thanks for tuning in to This Week in Laker Football.